Hello everyone, welcome to Professional IAS. Today we will see other violations of gentlemen's agreement. As you know already that we are, have started Telangana movement series for the group 1 and group 2 examination. Those who are watching me for the very first time, it is important that you should go to my YouTube channel and there is a playlist is there, separate playlist is there for the separate module. So make sure that you pick up Telangana movement playlist and watch all the lessons one by one. This is important. This Manorama series is also going on. 15 minutes, 15 current affairs series also going on. And I will be bringing up more new series with regard to UPSC examination as it has got postponed also. And uh, small uh, advertisements obviously. Those who are interested to be a part of group 1 or group 2 mentorship, you can connect to me with the number given in the description. And with regard to material and various modules, uh, recorded classes, etc., that I will update you very soon. Okay. Yes. Let us start our discussion. This is today is to March uh, 20th, March 20th, 2024. And it, it is almost like um, 9:30 p.m. So all of these hard work is just because you guys have to appreciate it. And those who are willing to buy, they can buy. Those who are cannot, they can just watch the lectures and enjoy it. Okay. Right. In our last class, we were discussing about violations of gentleman agreement. Part 1 was over. Okay. We will talk. We have spoken about some important introductory uh, things with regard to violation of gentleman's agreement. Madhav Reddy, Ranga Reddy, what they have told. Okay, moreover, Rangaradi even told to Jawaharlal Nehru when he was having breakfast with him, he told that Telangana people were actually against the merger, etc. So and so forth. That we have discussed. The second important, okay, that inter after doing that introductory points, then I have discussed the first uh, violation that is with regard to Telangana Regional Council became Telangana Region Committee. This part is over. Then we have talked about CM and Deputy CM post also was not properly given. So that part also we have discussed. Third one is portfolio division. That also we have discussed in our last class. If you are aware of this fact, please do go and watch. Fourth one is Telangana Pradesh Congress Committee, which actually has to work up to 1962, but has been abolished by the year 1957 within two years of formation of Andhra Pradesh. So this is also a biggest violation because of that all only our Telangana local youth leadership has not developed. That also we have completed. Fifth violation that we have seen is Panchayat Raj system. Fifth violation we have seen what? Panchayat Raj system. These five violations with regard to gentleman agreements are completed. Okay. Now let us go ahead with the sixth violation. Okay. So today we will be talking about sixth violation that is with regard to deprivations and de discrimination with regard to what? Irrigation. So, in irrigation, we will be discussing about the projects that have been neglected by the Andhra leadership. Second, we will we'll talk about irrigation expenditures on both the regions. We will talk about these are the subheadings that is how you have to go and write in the mains examination. Projects that are neglected, irrigation expenditure. Then, we will talk about uh, irrigation gap over a period of time between the two regions. Irrigation gap between the AP. Uh, Andhra state and Telangana area, these two regions, how the irrigation has over a period of time has revised. Okay. Then we will also talk about uh, some important uh, uh, projects which were uh, actually uh, was, was approved during the Nizam period, but later on uh, it was not properly taken care by the Andhra leadership. That also we are going to discuss. Okay. So, in irrigation, these are the various subheadings we have to discuss in the examination. Okay. Then, the seventh violation that we are going to discuss today is with regard to agriculture development. In agriculture, the first important uh, area that we have been neglected is the agriculture expenditure itself. So, we were given less expenditure and for the development of agriculture of Andhra state, more expenditure is given. So, agriculture expenditure. Here also, irrigation expenditure was less on Telangana, more with regard to what Andhra state. Then we also have here fertilizer distribution, dist, uh, fertilizer distribution discrimination also happen. Fertilizer distribution. Then we also have discrimination and deprivation with regard to tools and equipment. 
tools and equipment and the last discrimination that they have done with regard to telangana region is what livestock in livestock we will also talk about the vet hospitals veterinary hospitals that has been distributed across the two regions again that was in disparity after doing all of this we will also talk about uh, electricity deprivations electricity deprivations okay if the time permits we'll go with employment deprivations if it does not provide we will uh, end up our lecture with this three important areas so this itself constitutes 30 minutes of lecture so i don't want to burden you with lengthy lecture that is my intention because half an hour means you will definitely try to complete it but one one hour means you have to take out time in your own uh, schedule which i feel that little bit harsh on you that is the reason and there are some students who are asking me to actually do the classes every day and there are some students who are saying that sir please do the class uh, alternate day i get messages means etc so and so forth and uh, i asked them why do you want alternate days they are saying that sir if we miss one day no then second day again a new video is coming which is of lengthy video we are not able to actually cover up so they are saying that alternate day if i do even if it's lengthy also no problem but alternate day if, we, if they miss one day they can have they can have the chance to properly clearly calmly listen to the lecture so they want to not hurry up in telangana moment because you know that it is 150 marks and we are going in a very good pace also so there are two opinions are there from the students so that is why sometimes i am doing back to back two days one day i am taking break again back to back two days so i thought i got a middle path okay okay madhya marga of buddhism okay i got this middle, middle path okay chalo let us start our discussion right sixth one we are having irrigation violations we have to learn irrigation violations so here the first important point is telangana was given was given this is very important 91000 million cubic that 91 TMC TMC of water less than the allocated less than the allocated remember this point so how much water should be given from Godavari Krishna and all other rivers so in totality how much should be actually given to telangana the andhra leadership has given us 91 tmc lesser than that that is the first violation okay basically what happens here is whenever water sharing related water sharing related aspects come into existence water sharing between two states or two countries or two regions this kind of if this kind of uh, disputes arise between the region states or countries generally an international law called as helensky law is followed okay so write in the comment section the four important points of helensky i am not going to discuss about it i'll just talk about only two things which are actually important for our examination according to this particular helensky law okay because it's a very big pdf helensky See Telangana in Telangana, the Godavari in Krishna actually goes when compared to Andhra and Telangana. Telangana has got major share of water, Godavari and Krishna basin. So according to this Helensky rule, a area which is having larger basin area, larger basin area, that area irrigation needs to be fulfilled first. Need, needs to be fulfilled first. As because we are having the larger area, if any shortages are there, first of all, the needs of Telangana should be fulfilled. Right or wrong? Yes. This is one point the Helensky rule talk about. The other point it talks about is, okay, it also says that in between these two areas or two countries, two uh, states, whatever it is, the one which is backward with regard to agriculture, okay, that area should be given what more irrigation facility that area should be given what more irrigation facility and these two rules of helensky are actually fulfilled by telangana but you can see that even the helensky rule have told us this too but still we were allocated what 91 tmc less water okay actually 
we should get uh, the rightful share rightful share means what is that what is decided we should get that much and also extra according to helensky rule because helensky rule says that if you are larger basin area is that you should get more and if you are a backward region you should get more so first of all we should get the alloc allotted uh, tmc okay then above it we should also get because the helensky rule says about it but they did not andhra bayas leadership they did not follow the helensky rule nor they give us allotted water share that is the first important violation happened to us okay right then then what happened some data we are having all this data you have to remember and one more point we have to add here third and in in third five year plan in the third five year plan irrigated area of telangana was actually low this is there in the telugu academy that is why we have to learn third fire plan irrigated area of telangana was actually low compared to what andhra compared to andhra compared to andhra region right so we are having a larger basin area we should be our needs have to be satisfied first we were a backward region with regard to agriculture and in third fire plan also expenditure that they have done on irrigation and whatever the output has come with regard to third five year plan implementation telangana has got irrigated area less okay compared to andhra these three okay points are sufficient to allocate more uh, water to the telangana region but what they have done they have given not only the they have given not the allocated one but also less than the allocated one actually they have to give more so that is what happens here okay right now let us go at now some data is at telangana irrigated land if you see telangana irrigated land okay it was around 16.6 percent whereas if you see andhra state irrigated land it is around 48.3 percent okay just imagine this how much the discrepancy is there in telangana 16.6 percent of the land is under irrigation means irrigation is uh, uh, which is supplied through canals which is supplied through tube wells which is supplied to the government government supplied uh, irrigation is called as what basically good irrigation because that is anyhow sasta one okay if you are doing bore well if you are doing the tank one it will become very much okay uh, costly one so you can understand that uh, only 16.6 area of the telangana is in uh, under irrigation whereas in andhra state and royal china 48 it means what 16.6 percent of telangana region is under government provided water supply it means 84 percent of telangana agriculture farmlands are dependent upon bore wells or not yes when they have to run bore wells they have to uh, consume more and more electricity or not yes when they consume more and more electricity what will happen the price of the product crops will get increase or not yes so in telangana if we are having if we are uh, selling a crop selling rice for 45 rupees but in andhra pradesh the irrigation cost is less they will come and sell at what 40 rupees so as a consumer we will buy the 40 rupees one or not yes so our telangana farmers did not get the remunerative prices so as because in the market everyone is selling at 40 rupees they have decreased their price to 40 rupees this discrepancy led to what loss of money loss of money to our farmers they did not get the rightful amount because of this discrepancies see how it will impact when your product is not being sold and even when you are selling at losses will you survive does not survive it ultimately led to what lot of farmer suicide in our state okay this is the total fiasco you can understand that was happening at that period of time i guess this is all clear to you okay so one important gk is also there 80 percent of telangana does its irrigation by wells okay and tanks by wells and tanks wells are nothing but the bigger ones that we actually in the olden days we used in a body we say that wells tank is nothing but whenever a, a sump will be there that will be filled in the morning towards water will be there that with the help of that water tank will be there or else municipality tank will be there nothing more than that okay so just imagine the cost will incur a lot or not yes so that is why our 80 percent of telangana region was under well and tax okay 
in spite of all these my dear students in spite of all these in spite of telangana's backwardness with regard to this agricultural sector in second and third five year plan okay telangana on telangana it was for the irrigation purpose only 56.76 crore were spent whereas in ap 93.67 crores were spent you just imagine the amount of money they have spent on themselves even though they are having bought larger area under you know, government irrigation so this is the discrepancy that happened i guess this is all clear to you okay right now with regard to one important uh, project was mentioned in our telugu academy book pocham padu with regard to this particular project this particular project was planned by nizam government and nizam government has allocated 260 tmc for this and with the help of this particular 2 uh, 260 tmc dam 20 lakh acres of uh, telangana will be irrigated okay and nizam government at the time also planned a reservoir reservoir is nothing but our tank bund like area tank bund husain sagar is there no that is called as reservoir our our nizam at that time also planned one reservoir at kadem river okay and another reservoir at lower maneru dam so we would be having two uh, two reservoirs two dams plus uh the pocham padu project will be going to help 260 uh, tmc of water it will supply with and irrigate around 20 lakh acres and two reservoirs were there okay then when unification happened when our merger happened this was done all by nizam government at that time so when we got merged with ap what they did is they reduced this 260 to first of all 66 tmc and with the help of 66 tmc only 5. only 5.7 lakh acres were irrigated in telangana okay and this also they this also they did not uh, complete it okay they left that uh, complete construction okay not so according to the plan they have abruptly ended uh, the plan and they built it uh, uh, this to anyhow was not built and uh, that uh, pochampadu was built but very haphazardly with lot of redesigning of the project etc so and so forth so and when we asked when telangana leader asked why you are actually decreasing the 66 tmc etc so and so forth the biased andhra the biased andhra leadership andhra leadership has told that uh, okay karnataka and maharashtra government is objecting to this particular construction of this particular reservoirs and dams that is how they have given the reason to us because of that we were unable to do anything to it and this particular claim of uh, bias and the leadership that karnataka and maharashtra was actually having objection with regard to construction of this reservoir and pochapadu was actually later on found found to be what false it was a wrong uh, what information wrong uh, what is is that uh, communication given by the bias and the leadership to the telangana people okay then after all this happened and trc at that time was there trc went to the central government trc went to the central government how can trc be uh, keeping quiet right trc went to the central government and uh, got the permission from delhi for the same projects okay for the same projects and 1963 our uh, prime minister nehru ji also came uh, and laid the foundation stone for this pochampadu project okay uh, exactly i don't know that whether it is nizam sagar or nagarjuna sagar or Poch pochampadu is also called as nagarjuna sagar i guess please make a correction in 1963 who actually our pm has laid the foundation scheme it seems so uh, see that whether it is lal bahadur shastri or jawahar lal nehru uh, nehru please write in the comment section so in 1963 uh, prime minister of our country has laid the foundation for this and uh, central government gave us 40 crore rupees okay this particular 40 crore rupees andhra state andhra leadership did not give us up to what 1968 they did not give us this money okay and later on when the trc insisted insisted give our money give our money they gave only what 9.77 crore rupees so just imagine a point a dam which we are which is very important planned by the nizam government at that time and nizam government plan means obviously you would have talked you would have spoken to the 
um, experts at that time and after speaking to the experts only they understood that it is a very important uh, uh, what irrigation projects for the Telangana people if everything well set and done without having any problem with Maharashtra and Karnataka also and also getting from Delhi the permission for these two projects okay but still our Andhra leadership did not give the money so just imagine a point here that they are they know what they are doing that's all I can say they know very well that why they have to obstruct and become an obstacle for this project so they did it very cleverly for 60 years we have not done anything so thank god something has happened we got separated but we would have been under continuous stress if we would have been a part of the united ap okay right just a second okay sometimes what happens uh, this The video may stop sometimes, sometimes audio may stop, so it should not be a problem to you also, no? So, checking is not a bad thing, that's why I did it, okay. Now, with regard to irrigation, another project was there, Nizam, Nagarjuna Sagar project. Nagarjuna Sagar project. So, even this project was planned before independence. Nagarjuna Sagar project, this project was planned before independence. Nizam has already spoken to Madras government with regard to this and Madras and Nizam government did a survey with regard to this particular project and uh, both have agreed that we will have a Nadikonda Nadikonda project we are we will have in Krishna on the Krishna river okay and at that time one committee was also appointed Kholsa okay Kholsa committee was also there uh, this committee has actually given plan given plan for the construction of this Nadikunda project. Okay. So for that purpose, here you just imagine here. Uh, now what happened is Nizam and Madras uh, government actually was okay with the particular project and uh, Nizam government decided to have a Nadikunda project on Krishna River. And according to Kholso Commission, uh, he has given a, he was an expert in this project construction. So, he has given the recommendation with regard to how to design and develop this particular project. Right. So, what happened is, then after we got merged, we got merged. So, Telanga, uh, this AP government did what? So, you just imagine like this. Uh, this is the Krishna river coming. So, this as uh, our, we are at the left side, no? This is called as uh, left side. This is Krishna river. So, water from here will be called as left side because left canal, meaning because you just uh, turn like this and your left hand side is here, no? That's why it is called as left canal. And Andhra area is this is Royal Sima, this is Andhra area, no? This is what called as right canal. Right. So, just imagine this point. What happened? Then this project was actually planned, no? Yes, planned. Then after merger, what happened? Government of uh, AP, government of AP at that time has what they way what did it is for left canal for nalgonda and khammam these two particular districts will get benefited with the help of this left canal and they said that uh, 10 lakh 10 lakh acres of irrigation will be done by this nadikonda project in the left canal in the left canal 10 lakh acres irrigation will be done and for the right canal on the same project, right canal, they are having what Guntur and Nellur will be benefited. Guntur and Nellur will be benefited and they will be getting what 18.58 lakh acres. Now, just imagine the river Krishna water here, Nadikonda barrage will be built and more uh, uh, water is given to what? Guntur and Nellur and less is given to what? Nalgonda and Telangana. More so ever, if you see the atrocities, it has become even more bad. Even more bad. How? Because you just see here, they actually allocated allocated is how much allocated is allotted you can also say 10 lakh acres were actually given on paper okay but actually given is allotted is actually given is 5.6 lakh acres irrigation only given okay and this buntu neto actually uh, officially allo allotted is how much officially allotted is 18.58 okay but actually how much is given is 21.68 lakh acres so you just see that okay when nizam government has actually planned and and one more point i have to tell you that when nizam government planned this particular nadikonda project they expected that 
okay 18.58 okay uh, they 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 thought that obviously uh, this is not there this is anyhow with the with regard to what under the lagana this is it okay so in the mains examination you have to write this particular thing when you are writing the irrigation deprivations in your mains examination you should be aware of this fact you have to write the heading deprivation to nagarjuna sagar project then you have to write the statement like this before independence nizam and madras government has got agreement for the construction of nadikonda project on the krishna river and this particular project will be based on the recommendation of colso commission okay after the merger the uh, government of andhra government of andhra pradesh or bayaz andhra leadership has divided the project into left canal and right canal for left canal they have given what 10 lakh acres uh, were all allotted uh, officially and for the right canal they were they allotted 18.58 uh, lakh acres later on the deprivation has been done to tetelangana why because allotted is different allot actually is different like that you have to draw the you have to put a box there this is how the statement should go in your mains examination when you are writing for group 2 people just uh, uh, in the nizam sagar project the left canal is given how much amount of tmc of water or how much amount of allocation is given with regard to acres they may ask so you should be knowing this fact that 10 lakh acres okay allotted is how much 10 lakhs actually given is how much 5.6 lakhs so you should know as a group 2 student you should know the actual figures okay i guess this is all clear to you okay so because of all these deprivations you can see so what they have done first of all they have done uh, irrigation land in telangana was less andhra state it was more okay uh, we were having we are doing lot of tank irrigation in the third five year plan also second and third five year plan also you can see that telangana uh, expenditure on uh, irrigation was only 56 crores whereas ap is having 93.67 crores then pochampadu deprivation was there then nagarjuna sagar deprivation was there because of all of this because of all of this telangana water level means lot of the telangana farmers are actually drawing water from the underground from the ground water they are using for irrigation water level in telangana fell down okay and left canal was also not able to carry water because water was very less the left canal was also unable to carry and the two districts uh, that we were talking about uh, that is uh, nalgonda and khammam okay the water level was not sufficient in the left canal nalgonda and khammam was not able to irrigate the farmers has lot of stress they used bore wells etc so and so forth then water level fell down okay then at the end we can see that with regard to expenditure also right canal on the right canal 37.80 okay crore was spent whereas for the left canal which goes actually in uh, telangana the left canal will go for left canal government of andhra pradesh at that time the bayaz and the leadership has given only 26.58 crore so they spent a lot on them and they spent very less on us remember this point okay so by the by 1968 what happened before our agitation all these deprivations were done from 55 to 56 november 1 to 1968 all of these happened with regard to irrigation and by 1968 okay if you see ap has got 5.6 lakh acre of irrigated area whereas telangana has got only 0.9 lakhs irrigated means ap increased from 1956 to 68 ap uh, irrigation area increased by 5.6 lakh acres whereas telangana increased by only mere 0.9 lakh acres this is a kind of deprivation happened my dear students i guess this is all clear to you okay right chalo now let us talk about agriculture development this is our eighth violation i guess okay agriculture development violations in agriculture development should be your heading the first subheading here will be you can write here okay expenditure for agriculture development from 1956 to 68 this is how you have to write in the examination also okay ap agriculture development expenditure was 35.43 crores whereas telangana agriculture development was only 15.66 crores okay so you can understand that in agriculture expenditure also deprivations happen to us this is actually in the ratio of 2.2 is to 1 okay so this is a wrong principle according to the gentleman's agreement it should be 2 is to 
originally it should be 2 is to 1 but the expenditure is in the form of what 2 is 2.2 uh, for AP 1 for Telangana this is completely violated so this is the first agriculture expenditure violation happened this is A you have tried then B you have tried okay total irrigation total irrigation also you have to see here on irrigation also expenditure was done very very less with regard to Telangana okay this is also okay this is from 1956 to 68 before our agitation only all this will come into existence okay telangana has had 1.13 crore acres like that they have given in the telugu academic and ap has got 1.58 crore acres so you can see that already ap was having uh, like uh, more of the uh, seven streams of the godavari will be there krishna is also there they also have tungabhadra and all the river godavari krishna is also going towards them only okay coastal area little bit the uh, uh, sliding and coastal uh, sliding to the uh, uh, sliding plain area is there alluvial soil depositions will be there at the at the down course of the river so they have the very good fertile land also and they require less irrigation but still what have happened in uh, even though they are self sufficient in the irrigation they got more irrigation okay after the merger and we are actually lying in a plateau and we are living on a actually plateau with little bit height is there more amount of uh, expenditure should be done because we have to lift the water we have to lift the water in the form of lift irrigation then we have to supply actually we should be given what more of expenditure but that does not happen so our um, uh, irrigated acres were very very less when compared to what ap okay right now with regard to the third important point in agriculture development, so when you are writing the group one means answer, you have to write agriculture deprivations in agriculture development, you have to write a common statement that agriculture development has also seen the same deprivations from the bias and the leadership in the following ways. Number A, expenditure. Number 2, B, total irrigation deprivations. So, like that you have to continuously write. And all the group one students, please remember the values. Okay, right. Now, C point here is total fertilizers deprivations in total fertilizers remember this point okay now here they have given one data fertilizer distribution of fertilizer supplied in tons it seems okay tons of tons of fertilizer supplied so we have the data like this 67 to 68 okay then uh, we also have okay i'm very bad in I'm drawing 60 to 61 okay i'll try to do it better 64 to 65 years okay then we have uh, 65 to 66 so this is the years of what fertilizer supplied in terms to, uh, in terms to both the regions let us see what has happened for andhra pradesh okay they have given 1 lakh okay 00853 tons of fertilizer they have given for okay and in this in this year they were given 72265 here they have given 3,24,723 tons to Andhra and here they have given what 3,95,916. Okay, this is there in Telugu Academy, you can also check it. Now, if you see Telangana here, in 1967 to 68, they got 1,1,000 uh, 1, tons of uh, fertilizer. If you see Telangana, Telangana got only, okay, this is very heartening also. You will be like, your heart should not get a break and you should not get a heart stroke also after listening to this particular value we were given only uh, like uh, 9953 that's all that much turns only 91% of fertilizers were distributed to them and we got only 9% okay now in this uh, 57 is there no we have got only 8000 again half of it here we they got 3 lakh no we got only 1 lakh uh, 21911 tons here they got uh, uh, 3 lakh now we got only okay so right i have to actually this is a not total one let us see this one okay andhra share that is right this is total supplied okay this is right this is right okay i am right only i am doing this. so this particular thing has to be changed this is not this one uh, this is like this all are right only no need to worry you can directly check from the telugu academy okay 2 lakh 51,035. Okay. Andhra got this much tons. Okay. In these years, and we got this much. And then in the last year, we got, okay, 70, uh, 65 to 66. In this year, Andhra got 2 lakh 51,000 tons, and we got 94,000. Okay. 881. 94,881. 
So just imagine now if you see in the percentage in 67 to 68, Andhra took away 91% of fertilizer, we got only 9%. In this year, they got 66.5% uh, of total fertilizer distribution went to Andhra and we got only 33.5. And here they got 72.7% of total fertilizers. Here we got here how much? 27.3%. And here they got around 72%. Uh, we got around 27%. Uh, so you can see that how if you in the examination, if you are unaware of this particular values at least you should know in the percentages so you can directly see that how much deprivations happen with regard to what uh, fertilizer distribution also okay that is a uh, third important deprivations in agriculture development okay now we will see the d1 the last one here now we'll see uh, this okay after that electricity is also there tools and machines this is important here also we were deprived okay uh, we also have livestock also iron pluff iron pluff ap at the time iron pluff was also a big thing okay ap people got 40926 iron pluffs were distributed in ap telangana got just 13136 okay if you see borewell pump they were they were distributed around 80 56,873 pumps bore pumps were given we got only 31,724 and with regard to tractors here obviously we got discriminated a lot 2,269 tractors were distributed to the AP farmer we got only 643 so in tools and machines also we were completely deprived okay this kind of complete deprivations one by one no youtube lecture is there make sure that you take the utmost care and importance of these lectures what i am giving to you okay how many we are done the e so in agriculture development the fifth deprivation is there with regard to livestock livestock okay 1966 to 67 both ap and telangana See, I am writing here less, but if you are seeing my statements, this is this statements or whatever I am talking. No, this could be uh, you have to write in the group one examination means like this. Okay, in 1966 to 61, AP and Telangana both have equal number of livestock. Like that, you have to write, but I will be writing less here because this is also for the group two people. AP and Telangana both have equal number of livestock, right or wrong? Yes. So, if you see the number of animals with regard to AP, we, AP had 62.34 lakh animals were there. Okay. KHS, LA KHS, okay. And Telangana has got around 61.06 okay, lakh animals. So, we are almost, both are almost same. But if you see veterinary hospital, veterinary hospital, okay. In AP, the number of veterinary hospital was established 733. Whereas in Telangana, they were established what? Only 432. Now, veterinary hospitals are generally giving what? Free services to the farmer's livestock. If we don't have veterinary hospital, we have to go for the private uh, veterinary hospital or not. Private veterinary hospital will charge a lot. So, farmers are selling out a lot of money or not? Yes. That is what our farmers are also having a problem with regard to livestock sector also. We were not, we were not spared by this uh, Andhra bias leadership. Okay. And if you see the 66% of veterinary doctors okay of total doctors 66 percent of the doctors are from ap and if you see 52 percent are from telangana okay 66 is 42 here we'll get 6 8 okay 44 10 okay 6 7 8 here 32 32 percent remember this point okay so this is again we are having what deprivations were done to us okay the last and last one of today's class is the uh, ef F deprivations with regard to electricity. With regard to electricity. Now, in 1956 to 68, my dear students, in all these 10 years, uh, all these 12 years, government of Telangana has act, government of AP has actually spent 98 crore for uh, electrification of rural areas. For electrification of what? Rural areas. But if you see, if you see. The expenditure of rural electrification, if you see in second five year plan, second five year plan, AP got around 2,072 crores, 
and Telangana were given just 490 crore were spent on rural electrification. Whereas in the third five-year plan, if you see, AP has spent on themselves 1,452 crores and we got only 730 crores. Okay, so this again a discrepancy. Easily you can see that even in electricity also the number of the amount of money is not given to us sufficiently. If the amount of money is not given to us sufficiently, how can we go for rural electrification? That's why even today the rural areas of our state is again devoid of uh, okay in uninterrupted literacy. Even in summer uh, today also in 2014 you can just understand that lot of the districts and semi-urban and the rural areas 10 uh, morning 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock are gone. If this is right or not, those who are watching in the rural area, this is right or not. These days it might have become a little bit better for you, but just imagine in 2014 when I was there at your place of your age, I have observed that that happened because you just understand that from 1956 onwards the deprivation is happening, it has continued for 60 years. There is no possibility of upgradation and the standard of living increase or improvement at all. Okay, this is all about today's lecture. Okay, I hope this is all clear to you. Okay, and in the next class, I will complete the complete violations. Okay. No need to worry about it. Thanks a lot for hearing to me. Bye bye. Take care.